কুন্দন মিজান ভাই আছেন আমরা শুরু করতে পারি বিভু আমি বলবো বলবো সবাই আমি বলবো टपिक्स चौधरी to introduce and say something about our respected rafiq ahmed sir wadud sir please after this 12 classes uh, and before that everybody knows rafiq sir i i don't have to introduce him anything anymore but one thing i can say all of us athar bhai uh, myself uh, dr professor mohsin yourself everybody calls him our guru and that's the thing मेडिसिन एज ए होल एट गुरुधरा विद्या परम्परा आईजिंग दैट बेंगल टर्म दैट हेज टू बी मेनटेन एंड इन दैट रंग अफ थिंगस डॉक्टर रफिक अहमद इज आवर मैं सर वेलकाम टू दि सेशन एंड प्लीज स्टार्ट यू अलैक Welcome everybody. Uh, we have senior professor Professor Jalal here, um, and then we have new participants from um, Puripur. Puripur. Uh, welcome to everybody. <clears throat> um, what's happening? My share screen is not share screen. Okay. So normally, what we do is that we do uh, a. my lecture followed by question and answer session but today i'm going to combine it so that i will have only one session and i would like uh, participants to take part in it and uh, so i'm going to start with uh, today is white cure as tech guide i think we have done this topic before um but i think doing it again and again helps uh, professor moshin last week did wpw syndrome and he touched part of the white cure as that's an unique white cure as tech guide we have looked at hyperkalemia and if somebody has hyperkalemia that can produce white cure as tachycardia in the setting of sinus that's another unique uh, kind of but we are going to focus whether it's vt or svt so i'm going to start with this ecg and i would like the participants to answer so we have the uh, this um, multiple choice screen yes, sir please. we are bringing it sir just give us yes sir here it is and we'll give 30 seconds for everybody to answer please feel free to answer whatever you think but don't do it randomly just when you answer any question just you have to put some thought process in it why you are saying it um it, it, that understanding can be right or wrong it does not matter as long as there is a thought process behind any answer that's a good thing
Fisher, please let me know when it's 30 seconds over. Okay. So I think 93% said ventricular tachycardia. And number C was 7% said atrial flutter with underlying bundle band block, left bundle band block. I'm a, I don't disagree with both of these choices. And that's where it is. Um, so when you look at an EKG, if it is white QRS, if we do not know it, it is ventricular tachycardia unless proven otherwise. However, having few things, either some kind of algorithm or an old ECG helps. So this patient, of course, the setting is a 44-year-old male with non-ischemic cardiomyopathy presence with palpitation. And the interesting part, so if we look at, so this ECG was done January 8 at 205, at 2005 at 8.33 a.m., heart rate is 200. And when the rate slows down, you can see that this was actually half an hour later, it was actual flatter. You, I can, my pointer here, you can see the flatter waves. So that was actual flatter with one to one conduction. This is two to one conduction. Why that was not VT? Because the QRS morphology lead by lead is same. I'm going to go back. Um, if you look at the other ECG, this ECG lead one, uh, lead V6, this ECG, same morphology. So having an old ECG or a follow-up ECG is helpful in diagnosis, but I agree with the choice number one, which is 93% said VT. That's an acceptable diagnosis, even though it was not the case. Um, so I have another ECG now. So I have multiple choices. Can you get that? Yeah. The time starts we'll now. 30 seconds. And I'll keep talking while I'm doing this. Okay. I'm, I'll keep talking while I'm doing this. The previous ECG tells us uh, something that, I mean, a, an ECG which looked exactly like ventricular tachycardia was not ventricular tachycardia. Um, uh, and the same can be other cases where we think it's supraventricular tachycardia, but it's not supraventricular tachycardia. The most important thing uh, in the management of this patient will be really to talk to the patient and decide. Like the first patient, if he was hemodynamically stable, if his blood pressure was fine, if he feels conscious, then we have a little time to think about it instead of jumping into electrical cardioversion. Um, of course, on the other hand, if the patient was hemodynamically unstable, then definitely we had to do something um, immediately. So, uh, so the poor result? Okay, good. I think our, our, our ECG lecture is working um, because if you look at this here, uh, majority answered C, yes, sir. Um, yes. which is SVT with uh, right bundle bunch block. 16% said ventricular tachycardia, sinus tachycardia with underlying right bundle bunch block, and then actual flutter with right bundle bunch block. And I'm going to discuss all these choices. Please leave these choices on here. Number one, ventricular tachycardia. I will take that diagnosis because it's a white QRS tachycardia with a rate of 219 beats per minute. That, that is acceptable choice. B is sinus tachycardia with a rate of 219. That probably is not an acceptable choice because for the sinus rate to, to go up to 219 is, is very, very difficult. Somebody has to be very, very sick. Number C, we will come to that. Number D was actual flutter with right bundle bind block. If it is actual flutter, then it will be one to one atrial flutter. That means it's a very slow atrial flutter. Or if it is two to one flight, it's very fast. Now, one of the things that if we look at lead V1, there is a small R followed by big R. That suggests that it's probably a supraventricular rhythm. And of course, I had the benefit of having this patient's 12 bit ECG. And I brought this up, both of these ECG, because of the one reason that uh, having Availability of an older ECG, and this ECG shows exactly the same as during the tachycardia. So what we do is that if I get 
these two patients in the emergency room, I will immediately try to find out if there is any old DCG to match it. And um, it, 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 computer is coming very fast. We have fast access to the ECGs. I'm sure in sooner or later in Bangladesh, we will have access. So quickly looking at the old DCG or if the patient has old DCG, comparing it helps. So comparing this DCG with the other one makes the diagnosis SVT with underlying um, right bundle branch block. Sir, I have a question, sir. Yes. Sir, the previous issue, sir. Yes. Sir, uh, take it, take it. Yes. Sir, sir, if we follow that, sir, what will be the morphology of the uh, QRS complex in V1? Whether it is monophasic, now we should tell it, take it the... It, it, the question is, Atahar is saying, is it monophasic? But I think there is an R wave here. It's just that, if I go to the next ECG, I'll tell you. You are absolutely right. Uh, Ravik bhai, yeah. ek, ek yes. Ravik bhai, at a second. Okay. 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 Well, yes, go ahead. Yeah, I mean bully the duita parpa si ke jira me fellow there kebuli. Actalo board pash kora or actalo patient management kora. So in Bonagarne KG te apnik to uh abar with a review curbin, J how to differentiate S V T and 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 V T like uh, lead one, the early depolarization, like from beginning to the peak of the depolarization, very narrow. And then there is no capture beat, fusion beat. There is no concord. Yeah, there coming. is no concordance. So yeah, it it's coming. The ball an hour. No, no, it's <laughs> coming. It is coming. <laughs> it is coming. So, I get patient to Jerakum. Roigway, I get patient to it's coming. It's all, all of these are coming. So coming to the question of Atahar, it's an important question because it looks monophasic. But if I look at this one, it's not our typical, you know, typical right bundle R, there is a deep S, but this is almost in the isolated again. So I think when it became tachycardic, it almost looked monophasic. Absolutely right, Atahar. So, yes, so now, this question, Hafiz, I'm coming to your points. All of them will come in sequence. So this is CG now. I have given the heart rate in the bottom. Its heart rate is 210 beats per minute, and I have choices. This is a 72-year-old male who has coronary artery disease, has a DDD pacemaker in place, and came with a syncope. And this is the ECG. OK. So the choices are sinus tachycardia with underlying right bundle branch block. Number B is when particular tachycardia. Number C, atrial flutter with underlying left bundle bind block. And, and number D, few said sinus tachycardia with hyperkalemia. Again, I'll come to that point that sinus tachycardia at this very fast rate is, is very different. I would like the panelists if they have any comment because I'm not going to have question answer session today. So if you want to jump in, uh, all our panelists, um, I'll be ha I'm very happy. So, sir, I have two observations, sir. sir first of yes. all, in, in V1, yes, sir, whether V1, the first, second, third, that is third, fourth, fifth, sixth, sir, are these the P waves, sir? That does it indicate that <laughs> you are talking about this and this? Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, it's a possibility because you know what Atar is pointing out that if you look at this. Can you turn up the background off, please? So if there is nothing here, there is nothing here, there is something here. Maybe there is a P wave. But I cannot, if somebody challenges, but it is actually there in other leads also. So there is a possibility of P wave. The question is... <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Okay. So the question is, is it right bundle branch block? 
maybe, but it doesn't show the RSR pattern in this one. Again, sinus tachycardia at a rate of 200 beats per minute is very difficult. And then as Hafiz pointed out, if you look at lead, v, lead one, it does not look like right bundle. So that takes the first choice out. Atrial flutter with underlying left bundle bank block is out because it is not left bundle bank block. Even if, if it is anything, V6 looks like left bundle, but V1 does not. Lead one does not look like left bundle. Sinus tachycardia with hyperkalemia, I put it just for the fun of it. This is too beautiful in ECG to be hyperkalemia. Hyperkalemia will have ugly looking ECG, almost sinusoidal at, that, at this rate. And so I thought maybe ventricular tachycardia. Why? Because it full with one Sinus yes. tachycardia, hyperkalemia, at the fast rate hobina. Exactly. Okay. Absolutely right. Because the, the point that Apni next time, Ravik bhai, hoi, history that the end now. CAD, CAD declare. <laughs> of course, I'll, I'll give the history. I mean, okay. So the, the the point is that. So let's look at what what criteria would I? So there is criteria that if there is concordance in precordial lead, that means if the QRS complex, all of them are looking up are all of them looking down, that is ventricular tachycardia. And this ECG is concordance. That means you see V1 is positive, V2 positive, V3, V4, V5, V6, all of them positive. And that makes the diagnosis of ventricular tachycardia. You will never see that in SVT with any kind of abandoned conduction. So the next one, so this ECG, how about this one? We have a couple of choices here. Um, and below is the rhythm strip when the patient converts to sinus rhythm. Heart rate is a little bit less than 140 beats per minute. I think it was around 138 beats per minute. Okay. Sure. So we have the choices. One is sinus tachycardia with left bundle band block. Sure. Lead V1 and V6 look like left bundle band block, but lead one does not. I'm going to come back to this point. Second choice, 34% was ventricular tachycardia. We'll come to that. Number C atrial flutter with underlying left bundle bank block. It's a possibility. So that will be an atrial flutter, a very slow atrial flutter. Again, yeah. sinus tachycardia with hyperkalemia. I mean, as Hafiz mentioned, it is difficult to get sinus tachycardia during hyperkalemia. It's more normally you get bradycardia and then waves are sinusoidal. So let's look at it. What criteria can I use in this? One of the criteria that says that onset of the R wave to the deepest point of S wave more than 100 milliseconds in any precordial lead, that will make it VT. So let's look at this one. This ECG, what I have done, I have expanded this V4. And you can see from the beginning of the R wave to the deepest of the S wave is about 130 milliseconds. So if in any precordial lead from the beginning of the R wave to the deepest point of S wave is more than 100 milliseconds, that's VT. So no question, this was ventricular tachycardia. And these are the criteria that we should be using it um, for diagnosis. So now, so this is VT. Now, let's look at next great ECG. How about this one? The heart rate I have written down in the bottom is 130 30 beats per minute. 
It's a 17 year old male um, from one of the hospitals that I work, used to work. Uh, Hafiz, are you still online? Okay. Um, I'd like comment from our panelist. Any comment about so? Sinus uh, tachycardia with underlying right bundle rank block. Majority say 42% says ventricular tachycardia, actual flutter with bundle branch block, or junctional tachycardia with underlying right bundle branch block. Any 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 panelist? Any comment about this? I have a comment, sir, from Govindo. Yes, yes please, please. Sir, uh, uh, white complex uh, regular tachycardia. Uh, here uh, in AVF, uh, we have to see in the capture bit seems to be this PUF and QRS complex. Mm -hmm. And uh, others uh, points is uh, LBB morphology. Uh, LBB and RBB both morphology. Yes. But uh, white complex tachycardia and uh, capture beat, but not concordance in chest lead, which is okay. uh, points uh, in, against points. But more so, most points in favor of BT. Yes, white thank complex you. Tachycardia. So basically, the tachycardia is a 130 beats per minute. Then, of course, in a young person, if you suddenly look at this ECG, it looks kind of narrow. But actually, the duration of QRS is. 154. Lead V1, it looks like left bundle, but in chest lead, it looks like a right bundle. So if you look in, in the bottom rhythm strip, and if I keep following it, you will see something. So this is actually a right bundle with left axis deviation. QRS axis is minus 70, relatively narrow QRS. And if I put this, I ask the question, is there evidence? I have put some stars here. If you can see, even the half is making fun of EP doctor, but you can see that there is a P wave here, which is absent here. It's absent here. There is another P wave here. And maybe there is another P wave here and there possibly another P. These P waves are very, very clear, and they are not capturing the ventricle. So the ventricle is independent of the P wave. So there is every dissociation. And if you can prove every dissociation, that's 100% conformity of ventricular tachycardia. Unfortunately, every dissociation is very difficult to see as the rate gets faster. This most likely is a left-sided fascicular ventricular tachycardia, which is very, very common in Bangladesh. Um, it's not as much common in this country. So, so the point that we are trying to make, is there every dissociation? If the answer is yes, that's ventricular tachycardia. And the previous patient had every dissociation. And so it's ventricular tachycardia. And then another thing that Dr. Gobindo mentioned that sometimes we see what we call fusion beat. If you see this tachycardia, this is a slow VT. And there's a P wave here. And look at the QRS, QRS, and this QRS morphology is a little different from the previous one or the afterwards one. And this is in between a normal beat and a ventricular beat, which is a fusion beat. That means it captured the ventricle partially and fused with the ventricular complex, and we got the fusion beat. So presence of every dissociation, presence of fusion beat is more or less confirmatory of ventricular tachycardia. And sometimes we see what we call capture bit. That means the QRS complex is exactly like the sinus bit. How about this one? Again, I want the choices. 
the heart rate again is 135. Um, and this is the rate that we have to be very, very careful because it, it overlaps so much with sinus tachycardia, with two to one atrial flutter, it can be atrial tachycardia, or it can even be slow ventricular tachycardia. Those are the problems that we always face um, in this group of patients with this little bit slower heart rate. Slower heart rate is the one that, where we miss. Same as acute MI, if somebody comes with 35 year old male comes in, we are more likely to miss acute MI in a 35 year old than a 55 year old um, person or 60 year old person. Is that right, Adud? What do you think? Very true. So when we look at any patient, if anybody comes in, we must keep an open mind. Okay, so this is good. 74% say ventricular tachycardia. 9% say sinus tachycardia with right bundle bunch block. Sinus tachycardia, right bundle bunch block, septal MI, and atrial flutter with underlying right bundle bunch block number four. Now, can it be sinus tachycardia? It's a possibility because the rate is 135, and it looks like a right bundle bunch block. Can it be sinus tachycardia, right? All septal myocardia is a possibility because there is a Q wave in lead V1. Atrial flutter, maybe, um, with two to one conduction with some right muscle. But here, what we need to do is to see if we can find any other feature <clears throat> that so far we discussed. Number one, is there concordance? No, there is not concordance. Number two, is there every dissociation? It, it is very, very difficult to find any every dissociation in this. If we look for it and Hafiz said, we can always make it up as an EP doctor, but we should not do that. But one of the criteria that we can use is morphology criteria. So let's look at morphology criteria of a ventricular tachycardia. So is there morphology criteria for V? in lead V1 and V2, these are the criteria. If something looks like a right bundle, which that what this ECG looked like, if we find monophysic R wave in V1, that's VT. If we find a Q followed by R wave, that's VT. And then all R as pattern. And then in V6, we can find all this pattern, Q wave or QR pattern on RS ratio less than one. So let's see what this patient had. If we look at lead V1, there's a big Q wave with R wave. So it fulfills this criteria. In V6, the R and S ratio is close to one. The other thing, if you remember, in the first criteria, one of the criteria we said that in any precordial lead, beginning of the R to the deepest point of S wave, if it is more than 100 milliseconds, that's VT. And in this case, this patient had 110 milliseconds in v V6, beginning of the R wave to the deepest point of the S wave. So based on this criteria, right bundle, Q and R pattern in V1, and from beginning of the R wave to the deepest point of S wave in one of the precordial lead, more than 100 milliseconds, that makes it VT. This looks very slow. And I'm going to give you follow-up ECG on this patient. So we, this patient was started on amiodarone, came back with a similar tachycardia, but a slower rate. And then one can question, is it really VT? I'll show you what we did. We looked at the intracardiac recordings. This channel is the atrial electrogram, and this is the ventricular electrogram. You see the ventricular rate is a little bit over 100 bits per minute, and these atrial P waves are marching through it. So we clearly proved, and this is the learning process that we always exercise, that just because Dr. Ahmed said, this is VT, don't believe it, or Professor Odud said, don't disbelieve, but also we need to confirm our knowledge. This ECG, we were very sure this is VT, but we also looked at the intracardiac to reinforce our knowledge. And that is the learning process that we need to continue doing it. And I, I'm still doing it. I'm still learning this ECG as I move along. So the morphology criteria with the right bundle, it fulfills that criteria. How about left bundle? How about this ECG? Again, I'm going to give this ECG um, and need the diagnosis, please. This looks like in 
chest lid, it looks like left bundle morphology. <clears throat> so, so far we are all, all this ECG that we are showing have regular R to R interval, which makes it easy um, to diagnose. Big boy, yes. We, uh, is it English? Bolbo, the Jagula, Apna, Posundo, Karen. Jamon, Jamon, Hafiz, Hafiz, English, please. So, our second Bangladesh. Oh, sorry. So, um, I, I was joking with Dr. Ahmed that there are some things that the EP guys do not like, such as if the heart rate. If the heart rate is 150, then, and it is white complex, always uh, entertain this thing that it may be a tail flutter two to one. And, and look at few clinical aspects because, and, and I disagree with Rovik by one thing, because you know the EKG scoring system in the cardiology board, he gave sinus tachycardia as an option and he, he was very liberal in terms of saying, yeah, that is a differential. But if you write sinus tachycardia, you may get a negative score. Um, so we need to be aware that, you know, the white complex tachycardia, like this EKG also, when you are at 150, please be aware <laughs> that you are in, the, in that zone. I know that EP guys, they don't like this comment, but uh, the clinical yes. part, this is not cheating, but some way cheating. Uh, clinical part and the rate. Okay. So what Hafiz was trying to say, and I have emphasized this again and again in many lectures, that in American Board of Internal Medicine, there is no negative marking, except in few cases. If something is ventricular tachycardia, and I call it sinus tachycardia, I can harm the patient. If I say sinus tachycardia as ventricular tachycardia, I'll get zero. But if I call ventricular tachycardia as sinus tachycardia, I'll get minus one because my patient can die. Same is true for acute myocardial infarction. If there is a pericarditis, I call that acute MI, I will get zero. But if it is acute myocardial infarction and I call it pericarditis or normal, I'll get a minus one because I have endangered the patient's life. So this patient, of course, everybody gave, majority gave answer of ventricular tachycardia, uh, and then some gave sinus tachycardia, and then others at tail flutter with underlying left bundle went wrong. So let, let's look at it. I mean, first of all, I'm going to go serially. This ECG is a white QRS tachycardia. It does not fulfill the criteria of concordance. So we can do use that because it's not concordant. Number two, AV dissociation. I cannot see every dissociation or it is very difficult for me to define whether if there is every dissociation. So we can do that. This patient is not right bundle bunch block. It has left bundle bunch block and I can use left bundle bunch block morphology criteria. And what are those criteria? That if I have, I have what I have done, I have enlarged this bit. And you can see that this initial R wave is close to 70 millisecond. Same in lead V1. If it your left bundle being block with sinus tachycardia, this will be narrow. It will be less than 30 millisecond. And that is the point that makes it ventricular tachycardia. And also this patient also have in lead V4, from beginning of the QR wave to the deepest point of S wave is also long. It is more than 100 milliseconds. So based on both criteria, this is ventricular tachycardia. So this is the second one that in V4, beginning of the R wave to the deepest point of S wave is about 130 milliseconds. That makes it ventricular tachycardia. So when you look at this ECG, just don't look cursory, um, just look at rate um, carefully. And the reason I'm putting this ECG is, if I gave this ECG at a rate of 190, 200, everybody would say VT, but this is a rate where there is borderline rate. 
And that's when we get confused. Sir, so, yeah. Sir, have a good, sir, back to the issue, sir. Yeah, just one second. Yeah. Sir, uh, two questions, sir. Actually, which lead we should choose for calculating the R2S interval, sir? Number one. Okay. And, sir, in this issue, sir, lead two. Sometimes you yes. are confused. There is a nose at the bottom of this earth. Sometimes you are confused whether this can be the P wave or not. Okay, in lead two. Lead two, sir. There is a nose yes. session. Exactly. So the question was two questions. One, this criteria that I'm measuring from beginning of R wave to the deepest point of S wave, 130, this will apply to any chest lead. If there is a RS pattern, it has to be a RS pattern in any chest lead if it is from the beginning to the deepest point of S wave, if more than 100 milliseconds, that's VT. Right, sir. And the initial R wave part will only apply for V1 and V2. So I'm, I'm coming back. So the initial R wave part, more than 30 milliseconds, only did V1 and V2 because in left bundle, we have a narrow um, R wave. Now, what Atari is talking about this thing, is this a P wave? I don't know. If this is a P wave, this is a retrograde P wave because it is following the QRS complex or it can be just part of the QRS complex. But I think maybe you're right, Atari, that you see there is a in lead one also, there is a notch here, but it's absent, I can't see it very clear. So it's a possibility. Right, sir. Um, I, 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 I cannot bet on it. I mean, sometimes I'll say it is definitely it is, but uh, there is some distortion in lead V1 also. It can be a retrograde um, P wave. I remember this is a, a relative, I think this is a young person. A 30, it's a 38 year, it's a relatively young patient. So he has good retrograde conduction. So this fulfills morphology criteria. And if the morphology criteria, we call it VT. Now, if none of this fulfill, let's look at this ECT. This is a white QRS tachycardia at a rate of 169 bits per minute. It does not fulfill any of those morphology criteria. If I look at beginning of the R to the deepest S, it's 80 milliseconds. The initial R wave in V1, V2, we can't see it much, but in V3, the R wave is more than, less than 30 milliseconds. So this is actually an SVT with left bundle branch block. How do I know? First, the morphology criteria. Secondly, we did an EP study on this patient. This was induced during EP study. So we had SVT with left bundle branch block. Now, as I mentioned, all of them, so if none of this criteria fulfills, then we'll call it with SBT with aberrant conduction, right or left bundle branch block. Now, so far we have looked at all regular RI. This ECG was pasted, posted on Facebook by Dr. Saif Tipu from Cox Bazaar, right? And I have chosen the answers that everybody answered. And I would like you to the audience to give me what they think about it. I mean, it's an interesting ECG. I mean, we always encounter this kind of ECG and this ECG has become more confusing, especially on when the patients are on telemetry floor and we are looking at the telemetry screen and it can be scary. But please remember, it doesn't matter how ugly the ECG is, please talk to your patient. If the patient is awake, alert him or dynamically stable, take your time in before you make any decision to take care of this problem. Okay. So, fair distribution. Anybody, any, I, I want the panelists to comment on it. So, atrial fibrillation with left bundle bind block, sinus rhythm with non sustained VT, at, and then polymorphic ventricular tachycardia, um, good bit, number C and number D. All of them are have choices. Um, anybody, what is there any comment? Can I ask yeah. you something, sir? Definitely, please. So, this is. Uh not atrial fibrillation, as there are some sinus bits seen in between the irregular bits. Uh, in the lower panel, 
the second one uh, third fourth fifth sixth one and again like this uh, there are some pws yes sir okay and uh, I, followed by jamil, qrs complex jamil Start. can i interrupt i'm just i want to reemphasize so dr jamil is saying yes there is irregulate and you can think of atrial fibrillation but there is p wave here and, and, and i can see another p wave here and there is another p wave so it's not atrial fibrillation then the question would be why why do is it possible dr jamil that this little bit of it that is a short run of atrial fibrillation yes sir uh, and but uh, the curious uh, complex a uh, uh, little bit wider than the sinus bits okay and yeah. uh, this this may be a short run of bits sir okay can, can i say something sir yes please uh, the bit which are associated with p wave they chose the pr interval on all those bits are very fixed that means this is actually a sinus uh, capture bit actually uh, the ventricle complex following the sinus bit now that complex has a spike in front of it so that suggests that this is atrial cell ventricular pacing but the bit thereafter is a little bit irregular but and that comes in paroxysms so that could be either paroxysm of atrial fibrillation or not sustained fit but those bits are themselves seems to be regular so i would uh, prefer it's non sustained fit basically yeah. Actual sensing ventricular pacing. Sir, I have a point. There is VT, sir. Okay. Sir, sir, the sinus beat. Yes. The tachy beat and the sinus beat morphology is almost same. Yes. Which is that the VT that should be defined. Okay. Uh, like the lead one, sir. The all the leads, sir. There, there is a sinus beat. The morphology of the other, the uh, duration is variable, but the morphology is almost similar. So if you are the VT, it should be different, sir. Okay. that i agree with you so i want to take out few things from the picture number 1 polymorphic ventricular tachycardia please remember that to define polymorphic vt you need to look at a single lead so what i have done when i remove all these and you look at lead 2 only there is no polymorphism all the qrss are looking down and i'm sure panelist here will not disagree with that point to call okay. it polymorphic okay. vt if this bit was looking down and this is looking up then something in midway then i would call it polymorphic more than two morphology yes sir this is not polymorphic vt so that's out second question is why did somebody some of our audience um call it atrial cell ventricular pacing i think what they are looking at there is a p wave there is a sharp complex here but if you look at that complex is coming big after beginning and i think this is part of the qrs complex other possibility may be there is an artifact in lead v1 maybe you are thinking as phase b so i don't but if you look at lead v2 v3 there is no pacing spike at all so i think this is an artifact so this is not atrial cell ventricular pacing with non sustained vt so baseline rhythm is sinus it is possible that this can be atrial fibrillation conducted but the qrs morphology is slightly different from is so let's look at it this is what i thought that there is a p wave there is a rs complex these bits are a little different these are ventricular again maybe there is a p wave here with conducted ventricular beat sinus beat with conduction and then ventricular beat look at it why it is ventricular look at lead v5 it is a totally different morphology which compared to this one so i think is vt and let, if you look at lead v1 i have enlarged this bit 1 and bit 2 bit 1 has a beginning r wave which is very narrow less than 30 millisecond bit 2 has r wave which is more than 30 millisecond that means the second bit was a ventricular bit if i go back with my other criteria so my diagnosis was this is underlying sinus rhythm with runs of non sustained ventricular tachycardia and there is 
may be a little irregularity, and that irregularity sometimes you can see in ventricular tachycardia. Any, any, anybody want to disagree with me? I'm fine with that if you do. What do you think? Am I, did I give a right explanation? Uh, any other question? No, sir, I agree with you, sir, right now. Okay, yeah. good. So I, I borrowed another ECG from a, a publication, and this is the ECG. And again, I'm giving some choices. Um, I'd like the audience to um, answer. This rate is around 120 beats per minute. It's a wide QRS rhythm and looks fairly kind of irregular. It is irregular. Okay. Any, uh, Jamil, any comment? But, or what do the P waves are seen occasionally, so it's not atrial fibrillation. Okay. So that's, I'm just re emphasizing that this looks like a P wave while my arrow is right. Yeah, and and maybe this one. The lead V1, V2, you can see a P wave. So it is not actual fibrillation. Fibrillation. So that means it either active fibrillation is RPP or ventral cardia. But yeah. ventral cardia should have been uh, much regular. Yes. So actual fibrillation, left bundle, doesn't fit because it is not left bundle. Whatever it is, V1 is positive. So if it is anything, it is right bundle type. Sinus rhythm with right bundle is an option, but it's very irregular. Actual fibrillation with the right bundle is a possibility. Ventricular tachycardia. So the question is, does it fulfill any of our previous criteria? Kind of concordant, but not totally. But it does not fulfill the right bundle criteria. No. It could have been ventricular tachycardia if there is if it is regular. But this is the part that we always think that the ventricular tachycardia will be regular, but that's not necessarily true. So this patient, if I look at this, that uh, uh, what we are mentioning that there is P wave, and this P wave did not conduct most probably because it's too close here. Same morphology, didn't conduct. And this is the baseline ECG of this patient. This patient had marked first degree AB block with actual phase rhythm. And then they did EP study on this patient and they could induce ventricular tachycardia. It had an automatic focus on the left side producing a left bundle morphology. So the reason I'm, I, so the, the diagnosis, all the diagnosis, we, we should never put an ECG like this in the exam but we need to keep in mind that irregular RR interval does not mean it is not ventricular tachycardia. It can still be ventricular tachycardia because of few reasons. One, if it is an automatic focus, sometimes there is something called warm up. That means it takes time to get faster. Second, if it is scar related, if somebody had a myocardial infarction and there is a scar related ventricular tachycardia with a reentry circuit, they can have two circuit in, as a part of the same circuit. So one circuit shorter, one circuit longer, and it can give a pattern of bigeminy or some degree of irregularity. So irregular RR interval does not rule out ventricular tachycardia. How about this ECG? The reason I'm putting this, the, the, both of these ECGs are similar. Heart rate is 126. That one was about 120. And this is a white QRS. And this also has irregularity. I want, this should be 100% should be correct. Yeah. Oh, 
Okay. Well, I think I have confused you all with the, my previous ECG. Uh, any comment, Ataha or Wadud? There is no, uh, there's LPPP, it's all right. Yes. So the last one is out, interfibrillation with RBV is out. The yes. second is a very irregular. So, but Wadud, no, very good that you say nobody answered D, which is excellent. That yes. nobody actually said um, atrial fever right bundle blind blood. So that's fantastic. So it's uh, atrial fibrillation is a possibility or white complex, so vertical take is a possibility. Now we have to look for the morphology criteria. Uh, it's not in V1. The concordance is not there. And every dissociation. I couldn't be sure, but the baseline seems to be disturbed. So that yeah. goes about of atrial fibrillation. Yeah. So yeah. Most, most of the point fits with the atrial fibrillation with the LBB, sir. Yes. And so, because it is the third. Exactly. What are? Go ahead, Atha, please. Yes, sir. What I'm telling is that it is the uh, looks almost typical LBB, that is V1, V6, and the lead one. Then the R on the V1 morphology criteria, also this is very narrow. Also V1 and V2, that is irregularly irregular. And so, and the RQS interval also very, that is a very sharp set that is less than uh, 100, that's even less than the 50. So most of the points fit for the atrial fibrillation will be this set. Yes, and I think for future, if you see irregular, even though I showed you that ventricular tachycardia with irregular interval, that is for your academic exercise. But this, if I look at the QRS complexes, it looks typical left bundle morphology. Small R and deep S wave, and in V6, wide R wave, same in V1. And the initial R wave is less than one box. It is less than 30 milliseconds. So this is left bundle along with irregular RR interval. That puts it, first diagnosis is atrial fibrillation with left bundle branch block. Um, there is, I cannot see any P wave. Sometimes you may confuse this is a P wave, but if you look here, there is no P wave. So when the rate is faster, you can consider the T wave as P wave, but it is not P wave. So this is atrial fibrillation with left bundle branch block. And the same patient, when they convert to sinus rhythm, you can see the same um, morphology. Uh, during sinus rhythm, there is a P QRS complex, initially sharp, same morphology. I think uh, that's about it. Thank you very much. We should go to the next session. What is right? Dr. Rupik, I'd like to say one thing. Yes. Dr. Rupik? Yes. Sir. Uh, Sir. May, I say, may I say one thing? Sure. Uh, what were the issues you have shown? What ECG you have shown that the web found many uh, cases that uh, white curious of what may be the cause of this white curious tachycardia. In most of the cases, we have seen that if this white curious does not coincide with RBB or LBB in lead one, a V1 and V6, the mostly it is uh, ventricular tachycardia, unless otherwise proved uh, with something else. Yes, so I, I'm just going to re-emphasize what Professor uh, Jalal sir is saying that if the white QRS tachycardia does not fit into the definition of right bundle branch block or left bundle branch block, that is ventricular tachycardia. You're absolutely right. I mean, that, that is a very, very simple rule to remember if we look at a 12 d CG uh, of the tachycardia and there is no right bundle, typical right bundle or typical left bundle, then just think of VT and treat the patient. And then again, if you don't know and the patient is unstable, it is VT unless proven otherwise. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Sir. 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 Sir.
there is a question that uh, one of the participants, Buddha Ganguly, asked. That is, sometimes we found capture bit and fusion bit. If you regularly, we say it at a solution turbulency. How to confirm it as A or VT? Sometimes uh, there is a question that how to confirm it? Is it A or VT? What is the question? During irregularities, we sometimes found capture bit and fusion bit. So, how to confirm whether it is A or VT? As a, one of the participants, a medical student of uh, fourth year, okay. he asked the question to sir. Okay, sure, sure. So, I mean, the, the issue is first of all, we look at the baseline rhythm. Is it mostly regular? And then I find a morphology that is a little different. And there's a P wave before that. That's capture beat or fusion beat. But if it is grossly irregular, then it is most likely actual fibrillation is a commonly diagnosed. Second would be very rarely you can find a VT with irregular RR interval. But in, in, even though I have shown these irregular VTs for your understanding, if you find irregular RR interval, then please always consider actual fibrillation or actual flutter with variable AV block. That will be the primary diagnosis. For our academic purpose, yes, um, there can be a VT. That's the whole point. But you will rarely see irregular VT. Thank you. No, 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 no. আগে হচ্ছে যে আমাদের মানে অরুণ মাস্কির ইসিজি আছে সাদি ভাই ইসিজি আছে এবং মোহসিন ইসিজি আছে আমি রিকোয়েস্ট করব অদুল ভাই প্রথমে অরুণ মাস্কির ইসিজিটা ডিসপ্লে করার জন্য সাথে আমাদের অফিসার সহ সবাই পার্টিসিপেট করতে পারো অরুণ মাস্কি অরুণ প্লিজ শেয়ার ইওর কেস রিভু স্ক্রিন শেয়ার অরুণ মাস্কির ইসিজি রিভু यस স্যার অরুণ আর ইউ देयर না ওরন আছে ওরন মাস্কে আছে স্যার উইল আই স্টার্ট টু শেয়ার হ্যাঁ ইয়েস ওরন মাস্কে দিছি জি ওকে স্যার ওরন আর ইউ देयर মাস্কি আনমিউট প্লিজ Orun Maske, are you here? The Orun's, uh, somebody sent a message, Orun's net is disconnected. Uh, yes, sir. Somehow he is not disconnected. I think then I will... Uh, sir, he will join back. He said his net is disconnected. One of uh, Dr. Birat said that. So Ajay, we'll be sure later then. Do. Dr. Sadis. Dr. Sadis. Okay, sir. I'm sharing that. Sir, can you see the screen? Yes. Yeah. 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 There it is, sir. Yeah. What do you say? 85 years old pain. He was admitted in hospital due to weakness and dizziness, but no symptom. Electrolytes and thyroid profiles were normal. Echo was normal. He was not taking any drug that can lower the heart rate. Now, what is the diagnosis? Our question was, what is the diagnosis? What are the points in favor of diagnosis? And what will be the approach of our treatment? Amar Muna, I'm ready. I'm going to invite Kuri Vatut, bhai. What do you say? No, Asadu Zawan. Look, Asadu Zawan. Asadu Zawan. Asadu Zawan. Asadu Zawan. Mijan Bhai from Khulna, please hear. Yeah. 
Asad, do you want to comment? Please unmute. Asad, unmute. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Okay. Asad is the one here. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah. Asad is the one, we can hear you. What do you prove that there is a twist? Uh, seems to be twist on block seven. Twist one. Maybe, actually, it would have been on rhythm step. We do not. Sir? But then we are having some uh, features. Asad, Asad yes, sir. Step one, mobile step two, or twist one. Among the three, which one will you choose? Seems to be twist one, sir. Twist one. But let's go to the rhythm step in the bottom. The first pin, there is a P before the Q is complete. The second pin, on the down slope of the T, there is a P wave, which is not followed by any P wave. Then again, P, Q, R, S, T. P again, long pair segment, T. And the, again, on the down slope of T wave, there is something in there and not followed by any P wave. The fourth Q S complex has a P wave before. But again, that there is it, it seems to be twist to one in there. In the B6, also, it's clearly seen. Can it be movie step one? What was I? Mena. After this one? Movie step one. Yep. Movie step one, do you disagree? Movie step one? I think it is movie step one. Maybe so. Yeah. Never of movie step one. Uh, uh, I, I want to add something. Uh, against movie step one, uh, as because in the bottom panel, but errors are given. You have uh, a PR interval in the second bit, very short. Then, very wide next bit with the irregular QRS complex in position. And then again, it is shortened. So it goes against Mobi step one, as there should be progressive lengthening of the QRS complex. Jamil, Sir. there is a variety of Mobi step one, that is three is to two or two is to one, like this. Can this pattern one fit? Like this, the bottom, bottom you see, that is the two, two, then sinus, sinus. And it does not uh, strictly follow the criteria of the Mobi step yes, when yes, all the yes. all the issues. That is all the complexes. See, it seems to me it may, uh, most likely is um, uh, three to one. What is like is a problem or not? Three to one. Like to think the PQ is good. Have a look at that. A muskil has a can of the other state at three to two. Cochran tarp with the other one of the two is to one. Seems to be Mobi step one, sir. Mobi step one, then uh, uh, but, uh, fourth and fifth complex, Govindo. Sir, it's the longest strip, uh, rhythm strip, Jodi Hoto, Shetha Hoto. No, no, no. It's no. the longest to rhythm strip. Nahi. But you see the five, one, two, three, four, five complexes. The one, two, three complexes fit, but the fourth and fifth complexes does not. Now, if you consider lead two, then uh, this P wave is conducted, then P, this P wave is not conducted. And this P wave is conducted, this P wave is not conducted. And uh, if we consider lead two, then two is to one. And if we consider the bottom strip, then uh, Mobis type one. It is very much difficult, puzzling. Okay, sir. Up to you. We must see the rhythm strip in, in this is actually. Yes, actual rhythm strip is not uh, present here. The longest rhythm strip, uh, uh, it is. Uh, there is a follow up ECG. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, so let's look at it. Lead AVF. You're right, sir. The pointed first arrow that is pointed is a non conducted P wave. Yes, sir. Before that, there is a lightly prolonged, slightly prolonged PR interval, and then there is a short PR, long PR, and then there is a P wave in the QRS T wave, which did not conduct. And then there's a P wave with slightly prolonged PR interval. 
So by the, even though this, the number fourth QRS PR is longer, but by definition, this is Mobis type one AB block. Why it is happening? Probably there is preferential conduction that there is part of the AB node is a little bit more time. And then it goes to two to one. And then if you look at lead V1, again, first P wave is conducted, second did not conduct, third conducted, fourth P wave prolonged PR, fifth did not conduct, number six conducted. So by if I put it in the exam, only choice that is available for us for this diagnosis is when can we block? Yes. So this is not Mobis 2, it is not complete heart block, and it is sir, not first uh, AV block. Sir, if, sir, if I consider this, this is a high grade AV block, sir, for academic discussion, sir, the high grade AV block is because this is the purely conducted sinus bit. This is purely the RR intervals are irregular, sir. This PR interval, this PR interval, this PR interval are not similar. This looks as uh, this looks as uh, typical is the sinus bit, this one. But yes, sir, we cannot see your arrow. You have to tell us which lead you are looking at. Sir, bottom lead, sir, that is AVF. In AVF. Why don't right. you look at lead V1? That's much easier to see. One better. Dr. Rafiq, yes. can it be one, one cubic phenomena with little bit of uh, sinus node dysfunction? Well, the sinus node is functioning fine because the sinus rate is good. Uh, but the question was... Uh, but sometimes... Uh, but but sometimes PP interval the uh, PR interval does not exactly concept uh, the PP interval or you can say the PR interval here also does not exactly coincide with the Ongiwak phenomena. But uh, it is Ongiwak phenomena with maybe due to addition of, of uh, mild degree of sinus node dysfunction. So in sinus node dysfunction, there should have been some variation in the PP interval. Here, the, in look at the V1. PP interval are fairly regular. Rebu Sadi Asse, Sadi Bhai. Reable, and there are some missing uh, people not followed by any QRS complex. I want so, to come back to Atahar's comment. That Atahar, why do you, did you want to call it high grade AV block? Sir, as because, no. sir, PP intervals are fixed, no. R are variable, and PR are also variable. By definition, sir, actually, for academic discussion. That yes. is a, this is this is the sinus bit, but I cannot follow. Which which lead are you looking sir, at? V one, sir. V one. V one. Okay. And actually, it does not follow the. Uh, that is the typical sequence of type one Mobius type one AV block. Okay, but okay. Let's look at again. I am going to mention about this lead V one. First P wave is conducted. Second P wave did not conduct. Right, sir. Third P wave conducted. Fourth P wave conducted with long PR. Fifth P wave did not conduct. Sixth P wave conducted with a long PR. So majority of the P is conducting. We cannot call it high grade AV block. Yes. So our choice will be, shall I, am I going to call it Wenkeba or am I going to call it a Mobius II second degree AV block now? If I did not have that PR prolongation part and you gave me only the part with two to one, I'll just call it a two to one hard block without telling whether it's Mobius one or Mobius two. But I cannot call this high grade AV block. If you remember last week, we had an EKG whereby four or five complexes did not conduct at all. And then there was a conducted QRS complex. That will fall into the definition of high grade. I'm not sure this one any of our panelists will agree with the high grade AV block. No. Oh. Yeah. Right. So now the point is, uh, what will be the approach of treatment? This patient did not have any history of syncope, but quite elderly, but he had complaint of weakness and dizziness, but electrolyte, thyroid, everything is quite normal. Okay. So the point is, is, this patient yes. a pacemaker or not? Who, who's, whose ECG is this? Who brought it? Sadi bhai. Sadi bhai. Sadi bhai. Can you look for Professor Shubhra? Can you look for Professor Mukhtar Sir? Sir is here. Sir is here. Just give me one minute, sir.
তা তুমি সাধু ভাইকে ডাকো do we have follow up ecg of this? yes follow up ecg yes. now you know one of the thing that we do 85 year old if they come with syncope or presyncope that's one story dizziness is such a vague symptom it is it can be from many many causes that's one second what i do this kind of patient i make them walk to see what happens to the ev conduction if i make this patient walk and ev conduction gets better and the patient is still dizzy it has nothing to do with the heart rate i doubt very much that his dizziness is anything to do with the heart rate because i calculated it when it is 2 to 1 conduction his heart rate is 55 that is not a slow heart rate so that's one thing we do second what i do is if somebody comes with bradycardia and is less so somebody comes with this heart rate or sinus bradycardia with heart rate of 45 or 50 i give them a halter monitor yeah and if i find they wrote dizziness 10 times and the heart rate was 50 and the rest of the time their heart rate was 40 45 50 no symptom so i don't believe in that case that the heart rate is anything to do with the dizziness so you have to clearly correlate the symptom uh, with with the ecg um, in this case, I will be very careful before I implant a pacemaker, unless I can definitely prove that the patient has symptomatic bradycardia. So the, our first touch with uh, halter and correlation with the symptoms during the halter. Yes, and patient make the patient walk and be active. So I can I can tell the patient wear the halter, go up and down the stairs, go out for a walk, and write it down on the diet to see what happens. Is that very nice? Okay, So is Arun here? Colleague, sir. Achha, show us the second ECG. Till Arun is here, we can see the uh, most beautiful ECG. Review. Review, are you there? Arun, do we get the person? Hello? I yes, can, sir. Can, yes, sir. Sir. Yes, 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 sir. No, no, no. If I arrived, uh, Mosif, can you describe the patient? This patient came to it, they this uh, referred by some uh, pediatric cardiologist to me, 15 years old female. He has ventricular septal defect, and presently, the ECG, he does not have any symptom. So, does he need any test or not? That's why he sent the patient to me. This is the ECG. What do you want to know? Diagnosis or management? Diagnosis and as well as management, sir. Mainly management part. Now, what is your diagnosis? 
This is a complete heart block, congenital complete heart block associated with VSD. Pass, second, third. Sir, what is the fourth bit, sir? Lead one, pass, second, third, fourth, fifth bit. Probably the ventricular premature beat is just a coincidence. And uh, the other thing that you could have thought of is WPW syndrome. But if patient had WPW syndrome, you would have seen pre excitation in other places and it would have conducted one to one. So it's just a premature beat. So but one of the things that is, yeah, it's a narrow QRS escape rhythm, complete heart block. From ECG, I cannot tell congenital complete heart block. The diagnosis will be complete heart block with ventricular premature beat. Management wise, I mean, it's a 15 year old. Eventually, a lot of these patients need pacemaker. However, I had a patient I just saw, she is now 60 year old and doing fine without a pacemaker. One of the things over here to note that this patient has underlying sinus tachycardia. So what is happening, the body is telling the heart to increase the heart rate. That's one problem there. What we do, we do echo on this patient. We wait. If the patient is asymptomatic, we continue to do echocardiogram. And if at any point we see that there is dilatation of the ventricle, that is the time when we implant a pacemaker in this patient. Uh, this is mild otherwise, LV dilatation here. Yeah. LV is dilated, LV is right? Mild dilated. Yes. Mild dilated and ventricular septal defect. Yes. So if LV, if LV starts dilating, then it is a good idea to put a pacemaker. And 15-year-old probably has grown enough. I mean, if the patient... The reason we delay this is because if you put pacemaker in young people, the, the, they get taller and then you have to put new leads in. If we try to delay as much... And the patient has no symptom at all? No symptom at all. I mean, you, I, would, I would probably wait a little bit and keep follow up echo every year. How big is the left ventricle? Left ventricle is mildly dilated and LV will be mildly dilated, but LV function is good. But RV is very small. Yes. Physiologically, RV is very small. Okay. I mean, so there is no, no shunt. This is a VS, ventricular septal okay. defect. Yeah, but what is the decision about VSD? Are they going to fix it? If they, they want to fix it, that's why they send me. If they fix it, uh, uh, how sir, to the, fix the rhythm fast or the VSD fast? Sir, the surgeon will most of the time will not do the surgery without pacemaker, sir. Yeah, so that's the problem, yes. But then again, if you put a pacemaker in, the surgeon may dislodge the pacemaker. You understand? Uh, so, uh, sir, I would suggest that uh, the surgeon can use intracardial temporary pacemaker during the repair, and later, uh, after the repair of the VSD, uh, a permanent pacemaker can be. Absolutely. So, I, I think I agree with Jamil because th this is the problem. Let's say I put a pacemaker in today, and the patient gets surgery within three months there is high likelihood of dislodging the lead, number one. Number two, even if the surgery is done after two years, when they put clamp, I have seen surgeons damaging the appendage and damage the lead. So I totally agree with Jamil that I think they should go ahead with the surgery with epicardial lead and after surgery, evaluate the patient to see how, they, uh, how it is and reevaluate the need for pacemaker. And at that time, put the permanent pacemaker in. I, I will not do it before the surgery. As the patient is young and she has got the VSD, so it is likely that the congenital heart block is that is a, that is heart block is usually associated with the VSD that is a congenital, or we should yes. do the further more test to evaluate the other causes of the VSD, sir. Sorry, heart block sir, here. No, no, I think it's related to the VSD. I don't, I don't think we need to do any other um, evaluation unless if patient had SLP or some other thing, you would have known by this time. So, but the question is the timing. Timing, I think surgery should be first, followed by pacemaker, if we make a decision on that. Mosin, your description and your uh, decision. 
Ribhu, can you show the rest? Ribhu? Uh, yes, sir. There is no description given. Just a question. Uh, the Mohashir is here. He can describe. No, sir. No, this is the main thing, the management part. There is some PPE, sometimes it's irregular. So there is some uh, ventricular phasic sinus arrhythmia there. If we can look carefully, PPE is uh, sometimes irregular. PPE and closing the QRS complex is shorter without PPE, without the QRS complex. There is some ventricular phasic sinus arrhythmia also there. If you can look carefully, I have given the ECG by measurement. Can you show me the review? Can you see the that? I, I have given this test. Sir, will I stop screen share? To me, a poder uttutta dekhao na Sir, answer ta next, me, sir. Next slide, next slide. Atar bhai, aapte uke pathar na answer ta? No, I'm going to pathar chito. I'm going to pathar chito. Sir, it's an answer. Motion, how is the right atrium? Right atrium is normal. But RB is very small. Ribut kache nai thuma answer ta ojo kuch shundor kore shundu ke leke yeh te pakhe ichhe lo shob detail. Okay, I think we should move to the next one. Okay, shall we move to the next one? Asa Orun maski. Orun is actually out of Kakun Road. He was that's why he is out of range of Wi-Fi. He was trying to contact us through his hotspot, but still not getting succeeded. I think. Ribut is. Let's do it next time. Yeah, in that case, we will try that. Uh, sir, uh, regarding the pacemaker, I have done pacemaker in a patient. And that patient, he has uh, bypass with intermittent and symptomatic. Uh, several years ago, and was a case for pacing, but as he was symptomatic at that time, he did not agree to do that. And last uh, two years ago, he again had a history of um, become unconscious and we put a pacemaker in him. The interesting point is that in that patient, when doing the temporary pacemaker, we have to go through the mitral valve into the morphological uh, left ventricle going into uh, on the right side. And so that case a little bit of problem again while entering because the, there is no triphyscular valve, there is a bifascular valve. Again, it needs a little bit of manipulation. Again, during permanent implantation, same thing. A little bit of manipulation was needed. But after putting on the pacemaker, the patient becomes totally asymptomatic. Yeah, you bet. Okay. Okay, I think. Are we done? Sir, today? sir just a question from me, sir. Uh, in case we need to put pacemaker in a patient who has to, who has to undergo bypass surgery or open head surgery, is it better to do the surgery first than the pacemaker? Because if we do the pacemaker or any device earlier uh, and the patient has to go bypass surgery later, so does it increase the in in infection rate of the patient? Does it put extra load on him? You know. I mean, you are talking about doing the pacemaker before or after? Before, after. If we do the, if we, if a patient has to undergo bypass surgery, open heart surgery, and he also needs pacemaker. Okay. If a patient need to have a pacemaker as well as a bypass surgery, should pacemaker first or should we do the bypass first and go for the surgery? A hey, pacemaker implant. Yeah. We, we, we usually pull, uh, do the bypass first. And then before the patient goes home, the day before patient is discharged or three day surgery day four or five, we will put the permanent pacemaker in. Because again, the same theory during procedure, it is most likely that lead will get dislodged. Um, so we don't do it. Sir, does it also uh, decrease the infection rate? Uh, the risk of infection is lower in that case? No, we are not considering that point at all. 
because I am not going to do it before the surgery. I am not going. I am not delaying it because I have less risk of infection. I am delaying it because the lead will get dislodged during the surgery. And if you start into the epicardial the lead is there, so you are not a, a, in a putting the patient in danger. Exactly. But I'll give you a reverse scenario. Somebody needs transcatheter aortic valve placement and needs pacemaker. In that okay. case, yeah. the pacemaker first. Yeah. Because two reasons. One, they are not going to go to the right side. And as a matter of fact, a lot of patients with TAVI needs permanent pacemaker. So um, putting a pacemaker in, in those scenarios, we put the pacemaker first because they are not going to disturb the right side at all. So it's uh, around four percent, isn't it, after TAVI? Well, it used to be more than that. It used to be up to 14%. But uh, depending on the valve type, um, we do a lot. Of, we have, Our center have done about 400 um, TAVIs. And it's about 10%. Ten. So when they develop, yeah. That's a huge number. A chronic uh, valve has more problem, Ravikul. Huh? Or can you share a case? Or do unmute, please? Just trying my best to. Oh, <laughs> okay. yeah, it's coming. Time. Is that? Yeah, we are seeing it. It's going to show. Describe it. Yeah, before okay. Nate goes, I'll just give you a brief history. This was a. Is it coming? Yes. Yes. So, I have a lot of uh, Nate problems. I don't know whether I can continue or not. This is a 71 year male uh, referred for bradycardia. No risk factors, resection factors is common. No, just uh, he has some past history of uh, dizziness and otherwise asymptomatic. He's a retired police officer. So this was the ECG of the patient. I mean, you can see here, and it's bradycardia inverted uh, P waves in inferior rates, rates around 32 to 24 beats per minute. Then there's also old MI interceptor, is it? This is was done. This rate is looking around 30 beats per minute. During daytime, one of his heart rate of 20 minutes. This Will, uh, worrisome. We discuss uh, about this patient. And as uh, our discussion with the director of physicians, it decided to put pacemaker in this patient. Because the. Uh, Orun, can you see the screen? Or can you show the share the screen? We again disconnected. I, we have better present this in the next day, sir. Yeah. Interesting case. Arun? Only again disconnected. Sir, his is not good. Uh, Arun, uh, you are disconnected again. Uh, can you show the screen again? No, the uh, last one, last ECG, second ECG. Yeah. Sir, uh, the P wave of the third it is not from the sinus node. The first two P, P, P waves seems to be probably from the sinus node, but the third one is not. Yes. Same is true of the P wave. And the sign of P node. Can you show me? Athar, I ask you about it. I'm the nine day. Hey, now. Yeah, yeah. Orun, they have to disconnect it. I can't say. 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 I
properly that will be better if we stop sharing i go into uh, go on sir sir yes, regarding concordance and discordance criteria bt criteria what, what are the, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. so i think i will answer this question um arun we will do your i think your reception is poor no, no, so we will no, no, do no, it no, next no. week no. so that we can enjoy this case uh, uh, when, uh, when uh, you uh, at a better net job uh, so go in the Yes, the presence of concordance supports VT. Discordance does not rule out VT. So <laughs> having having concordance means that it is ventricular tachycardia. But if it is discordant, that does not mean that it is not VT. Then you have to use other criteria for diagnosis of ventricular tachycardia. Right, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Nice okay. question, Govindo. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Nice question. Yes. আচ্ছা আসাদুজামান Sorry, Sadi bhai, possibly you are here, but you cannot fail to that. Uh, it is a technical problem from uh, Sadi bhai's side that he cannot join with the CD. Sir, may I ask a question to Rubik, sir? Yes, yes. sure. Well, I have seen a, uh, a young lady of 15 years having complete fitness, but asymptomatic. Will it roll up the speaker in this young lady? Asad, you are not a problem. that network is that connection but yeah. my question is if a young lady like 15 years having complete heart block without any symptom so have any role of this young lady yeah i think we we have discussed similar issue in a and most likely this is congenital complete heart block in a asymptomatic person we would we like to wait as long as we can we see these patients every year if they develop symptom or if they develop dilatation of the ventricle then we do a pacemaker the other thing i have done as i mentioned earlier that i had a 60 year old female and she was she said i have no symptom but when i put her on a treadmill she could only walk for 2 minutes that means she was symptomatic and so that's that's why you decide on a pacemaker like but i had young patient 30 year old patient congenital heart block can walk on a treadmill for 12 minutes without any symptom so no need for pacemaker um in those patients so the whole point is to try to delay the pacemaker implantation as much as possible eventually they will end up needing pacemaker sir, uh, sir, <laughs> another indication for the congenital heart disease if put on the treadmill if there is chronotropic discordance uh incompetence then uh, it's indicated indication for pacemaker right sir yeah, exactly so that's what i did 
with my other patients. So she was very, she had no symptom with daily life. I said, Let's, let me put you on a treadmill. And when I put her on the treadmill, her heart rate did not go up. Ventricular rate went up to 60. Her underlying sinus rate went up to 170. And she could only walk for two minutes. And so that's basically chronotropic incompetence because um, uh, ventricle is not being able to keep up with the demand of the body. And she needed a pacemaker. But uh, unfortunately, she refused. I mean, that's fine. You can wait on that. But eventually, this kind of patient will come back with heart failure if we wait too long. The ECG with lateral complete heart block, you at that point. The actual rate was quite high. The sinus rate was quite high. There was sinus tachycardia. And that's the point the body needs more heart rate. It cannot get it. Isn't it, sir? Exactly. I look at that. I look at the underlying sinus rate. How is it? If the underlying rate is 130, that means the body is releasing more catecholamine to increase the heart rate, and it's not getting it. Most of the congenital complete heart block, you will see that the sinus rate is probably 90 and the ventricular rate is 45, 50, they're fine. But uh, it is a younger person like to wait as much as possible. Thank you. So in ETT, in this congenital complete heart block patient, how much increase in heart rate or ventricular rate are satisfactory to uh, say that this, this patient does not really require pacemaker at this moment? If we do that treadmill, of that patient, and we see the ventricular rate rise. How much percentage of rise of ventricular rate uh, is safe to say that this patient does not require pacemaker care at this moment? Is there any cut off? Or, uh, I don't. I don't care about the rate as much as other people. If my patient can walk on the treadmill for 12 minutes, and the heart rate goes to 70, so what? Okay. On the other hand. Patient can walk only two minutes, gets extremely short of breath, heart rate goes to 70. There is a big difference. So I think it's the, it's the duration of the exercise, which is important. Uh, because the ventricular rate will not go as, as much, because junctional rhythm will go maybe up to 100, 110 maximum. So it's not the heart rate that is important, it's the, it's the duration of the exercise, which is important, and symptom associated with it. That is the functional capacity is the most important thing, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I Thank you, sir. Uh, wrap up today. Yes. Uh, would you give some concluding uh, comments? Hello. Hello. concluding comments. Sir, you unmute. Sir, mute for us. You unmute for us. Uh, I think everything has been discussed. I don't like to uh, comment anymore. Uh, the, uh, Dr. Rafiq Ahmed has shown many uh, beautiful and uh, to know many things new about the white QRS complex. Well, I think everybody is benefited from this uh, session. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Yes. I yeah. thank Dr. Rafik very much to show so many cases of very interesting things to diagnose and treat the patients. Okay, so finally, uh, we'd like to thank Rupi Ramesh sir. Really, actually, Amra, uh, we are waiting for this uh, session, actually. White complex tachycardia always is a this is a session. Sir, uh, today your uh, actually presentation was, I think, more enjoyable and more beautiful. Sir, actually we, sir, I, I think our participants have uh, benefited too much for today. And today we also congratulate Dr. Khandogar Asaduzawan. Asaduzawan, we are really very happy to see you. <coughs> and I want to uh, congratulate our participants from Kharagpur. Possibly there are so. A uh, good number of participants in front of the big screen in Fulit uh, headed by Dr. Shami, Professor Shami Mohammed. Shami Mohammed, by if you are here, we must congratulate you and we have to uh, have you in our every session, that is every Saturday. So, uh, in next Saturday, sir, 
there is again that is the issues of the electrolytes and metabolic disorders that will be actually uh, uh, that our khalikud uh, jawan uh, sir part of the lecture was delivered pe, uh, the previous saturday and uh, the rest part will be on the next saturday that is uh, electrolytes and metabolic disorders by the khalikud jawan so possibly i think we can conclude the sessions today and thank you and we must uh, thanks our hafiz bhai possibly who was in the early part of the session possibly not but we are very much happy to see the hafiz bhai in every day hafiz bhai if you are here we can uh, want to see something from him hafiz bhai uh, sorry i am um, uh, clinic korte si sudhan in and out so I'm, i apologize for that acha no problem but we want to see from, uh, some ecg is from you if you get chance then you can show your ecg we'll be happy i can i can show this if you let me know the uh, topic beforehand then at the topic okay. next day electrolytes and metabolic disorders next saturday okay hafiz okay. can i suggest that if you could get some ecg with acute mi and bundle branch block right left bundle that will be a very good thing yeah uh, we have <laughs> your own and, and with the angiogram picture so bundle branch block ecg with acute mi and uh, with the angiogram that will be fantastic So to share, so we can call this session today, sir. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you all. Thank, thank you all the participants and respective teachers. Next Saturday we will again meet and have uh, discussion on metabolic, metabolic, metabolic and electrolyte disorders. Thank you all. Thank you. Good night. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikum salam. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. Oh, it's a good one. 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 Oh, it's a good one.